Hi, this is Wayne with the Red Pill Radio. I wanted to discuss with you today the uh, idea of getting on your property a root cellar. And all that is is a, uh, a shipping container, which uh, is commonly used to transport goods uh, from overseas, China, etc., to the United States, hopefully vice versa. Uh, well, we have uh, the capacity to take these and bury them in the ground and turn them into a root cellar. And the reason why that's important is that uh, in the event of uh, electric being knocked out, you won't have a, a means by which to heat or cool your house uh, or refrigerate your food. And by, by putting things underground as they did 50 to 100 years ago, you're able to cool these things and or heat them depending upon the season, but the, uh, the, the constant temperature within the container that's buried will stay the same. Thus being uh, providing, uh, number one, a, a, an environment for your uh, vegetables to survive and not rot. And in an emergency situation, you'd be able to uh, go inside there as well and stay warm and or cool yourself off depending upon the season. So uh, we had a frog built here, uh, that's the, the, the construction company. We, we actually will excavate a hole and set these storage containers into the ground and create a root cellar. And there's different sizes of these, which I'll put a link to later on. Uh, the one behind me is uh, a 40 foot high cube which means it's a little bit taller than most of them and uh, twice as long as most of them. A normal uh, container that you see, uh, most of the time they're normally uh, 20 foot long. The little uh, neighborhood uh, uh, storage uh, containers are normally 10 foot long. Uh, so just to give you a rough idea, uh, most containers are about 8 foot tall. This particular one is nine and a half foot tall. So uh, we'll take a couple shots of it. And uh, this is Wayne with the redpillradio.com. And we want to do everything we can to help you survive the collapse of the dollar. So again, because you intend to put this into the ground, it's essential that you use a shipping container. That can be found on Craigslist uh, or um, uh, on Google. In either event, you would search under shipping container or cargo container. And that's where uh, you'd be able to find something similar to this. And they have them in different sizes in order to, to suit your needs. And uh, uh, if you're in our coverage area, we'll come out and we'll supply you the container. And uh, if you have one already, in either case, we will bury it for you and turn the shipping container into uh, a root cell. And uh, our number is 888-569-1919. My name's Wayne, and uh, I'll be glad to answer any uh, questions as to you know, how uh, we, we facilitate this. Uh, otherwise, we'll have a, a complete video as to you know how you can do this yourself. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're in our area, we want to do the job. But if you're not in our area, we want you to do it. Potentially, even do this as a business for yourself. Help your neighbors to get self-sufficient, and that's what this is all about. Is we need to help each other out. We've got bad times are coming, and uh, it's essential that we help each other out. And this is something that will. Uh, do well as things uh, go worse and uh, uh, as the dollar collapses. And, uh, 
So uh, let's uh, let's quick take a, a look inside. Uh, just going to show you briefly, uh, you know, how you open this. It's real simple to do. There's just a couple levers, and one thing I recommend that you put a recessed lock on these so that the lock shank isn't uh, visible. Uh, it makes it much more difficult for somebody that wants to break in to get to the shank because there's a plate. Uh, looking right there, if you look above my finger, there's a, a, a lock that goes underneath there. And uh, that's where uh, you, you uh, lock the, uh, the doors and um, it keeps uh, someone from going in there with a bolt cutter. It slows them down anyway. All right. So this, you flip this up, there's just a little uh, ring here. There's uh, the external lock, and you just lift this lever up, pry it. Do the same thing on the other side. And that's it. Uh, so it's uh, corrugated steel, heavy, heavy gauge steel on the sides. And It's a very secure and weather tight container. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, one of the other sizes that you uh, could look at. Uh, typically a, a high cube you're going to pay somewhere between three and five thousand dollars for one of these and uh, then there'll be delivery on top of that. Uh, just to give you a rough price range when you're shopping in your area uh, to get one. Um, uh, or you know if you, if you call us uh, you know we'll certainly uh, go over pricing and uh, get you hooked up so that you have your own root cellar. You have a place to go that's constantly 50 or 60 degrees. It's uh, how our uh, grandparents and great grandparents stored their food. Uh, so we're just going to have to roll back the clock a little bit in order to, to survive the dollar collapse. This is Wayne with the redpillradio.com signing out. All right, I just wanted to go over a couple things. Uh, uh, I want to make sure that if you're, you're shopping for a, a cargo container that when you get one that you're, you make sure that uh, it's, if you intend to bury it, that it isn't just a trailer where they pull the, the wheels off the bottom. So one way to do that is look around the uh, perimeter of the uh, the cube, let's call it, and just look for any places where there is wiring. Shipping containers don't have any wiring on them. They don't have wheels underneath. So you can look for the places where there is formerly uh, you know, anything bolted onto it, such as the wheels or the uh, jack that would go in the front of it in order to uh, you know, raise it up when the, uh, the tractor would back up onto the trailer. So um, this has heavy corrugation on the inside. Typically when you see uh, a normal, uh, uh, you're on the inside of a, a typical trailer, of a tractor trailer, they have smooth sides. Um, they'll normally have spots in there because th what's typically happening is, is they've got all their boxes that they're, you know, moving around inside of there. Uh, so <clears throat> look for the corrugation. That's, that's one of the most defining ways uh, to di distinguish between a cargo container and the trailer of a tractor trailer. Uh, so the, the smooth sides on the inside and the outside, look for bolts underneath the trailer, look for any places where there was wiring. In this cargo container, there is no places where there was wiring. Uh, so those are uh, a couple of the ways where you can distinguish between the uh, typical uh, container and the tractor trailer.